New Bond Street. Oh, sorry, Old Bond Street. On Old Bond Street, I think. Uh, navigation in London is hard. Just, it's it's hard. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so I think I have missed a video. This video is coming up super late. I didn't even have time to do makeup, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that I filmed it, film this video, and get it out this week because I am so lagging behind, and I really apologize. But anyway, uh, so today's video is my haul when I was in London. Uh, I got back about two weeks ago, and I had such a great time. Um, like it, I think I said this like before, like the weather was crap, but. It's London, it's supposed to be, <laughs> right? So I do want to apologize, um, I'm a little under the weather, uh, hence the no makeup and everything. I'm probably going to be coughing and sneezing a whole bunch, so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Catherine and my channel is KW Shops. Uh, so on my channel, I like to do, um, I like to do like uh, tips on the best way to save on your splurges. I like getting the most baton for the least money possible. And on my channel, I share all those tips on how to do that with all of you. If you would like to know how to do that, uh, please hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the bell icon so you can be notified as to when I actually do, <clears throat> oh my god, so you can be notified when I upload my videos, which is supposed to be once a week. So really quickly, the first thing I have to do is give a huge shout out because the bag I carried the absolute most while I was in London is this one right here. Here we go. This is my vintage St. Cloud with the canvas strap. So this came with the Vachetta strap originally and I actually did a video where I removed it and replaced it with this. So I'll leave a link to that down below or maybe up here in the uh, info card box. But this is the bag that I reached for the absolute most. It's the perfect bag to go shopping. Uh, I just was throwing it over my coat wearing it crossbody for the majority of the time. It's the perfect size because guess what? London in March, uh, yeah, you have to carry an umbrella with you and my little umbrella along with a couple of other things fit inside of here absolutely perfectly. So so uh, huge shout out to this bag. If you have this bag, uh, this is the GM St. Cloud, so the largest size of the St. Cloud bag, um, then I definitely recommend it if you have to go to a very rainy climate. So you guys know that I live in Miami, uh, so there are a bunch of trends, especially come fall, winter time, that uh, just simply won't work for me because it is like 80 plus degrees here all year round for the most part. One trend I was loving was the Baker Boy hat, and I... Oh, I saw so many bloggers wearing the, the Baker Boy hats and I really wanted one so so badly. Well, while I was in London I went to Topshop actually and picked up this. Um, yes, it is much more humid here so while I was in London my hair was much smoother uh, so it looked great over this hat. Uh, I think I'll try putting it on um, so maybe you get an idea but my hair was much smoother un underneath it so it sort of worked a little bit better. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Um, I think I this hat was about like 15 or so pounds and I absolutely love it. Uh, the other thing is that it was protecting me from the rain. So uh, all I had to do is kept my umbrella, wore my hat, and put my hair like into my coat uh, so it wouldn't get wet because I'm sorry, I dry bar isn't in London yet unfortunately so uh, I was not trying to risk it. <laughs> That was the first thing that I really, really loved while I was there. And like I said, it was about 15 or so pounds, and I pretty much wore it the whole time that I was in London because it rained every day. So these next pieces that I bought while I was in London are I bought from Harvey Nichols, and uh, I didn't know about it before, but Harvey Nichols is like a very big department store. I think it's very similar to like Bloomingdale's. I bought a whole bunch of pieces from the Fenty Beauty collection, finally. Um, every store that I've gone into in the States never had the colors that I wanted to try in stock, and I didn't just want to order them online and, you know, cross my fingers. So what I bought was the Matchstick. This is the contouring one, and I bought it in the color Truffle, uh, but this is what it looks like right here. I'm not wearing any makeup right now, uh, so you don't see it on my face at the moment, but I'm going to swatch it for you really quickly here. That's what it looks like. <clears throat> um, what's great about it is that it sort of goes on, what she said is that it goes on as a cream and, and becomes like a powder, um, so this is what it looks like here, and I'm just going to sort of blend it a little bit and yeah I don't know if you can really actually see that um you guys know I'm not super into makeup but the Fenty Beauty stuff was 
uh, people have said really great things about it and I've been using this for about a month now or ever since I got it. <clears throat> And I really do like it because it is a lot more lightweight, but I do feel like I have a lot more control over it because normally I just use dark eyeshadow because I'm lazy. <laughs> so I do, I am very, very glad that I was able to get, uh, you know, an actual contouring, you know, product. The next thing I got was the Fenty Primer, a Pro Filter Soft Matte Instant Retouch Primer. Uh, this is what it looks like here. <coughs> so this is the 32 milliliters and 32 mil and 1.08 fluid ounces. Um, I don't actually know what primer does, so I'm not the one to listen to about this. All I know is that she suggested it, it felt nice on my skin, I guess. She said it's supposed to like make the makeup stay on better, whatever. Um, I bought it and it's good. <laughs> You're gonna have to find a better review than mine on this because I don't actually know what it does. So, um, what I actually came in there for was the Fenty Beauty Foundation. Um, so she, I haven't really had many struggles finding foundation that suits my color, but I know a lot of other people have, and I really think it's great that she caters to, you know, people that haven't classically been um, represented in the beauty industry, and I just think that's so incredible, and I wanted to support it. So it basically has been sold out um, from the moment that it was launched almost a year ago. But I did want to try it out, but every um, I wanted to try it out in the store, and every store I've ever gone to, um, all the colors I think that I think were in my range were sold out. So I didn't find it until I was in London at Harvey Nichols, and this is the one that I got here. Um, so this is the uh, Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation, and I got the color 310. Okay, well I'll try to insert a picture of it, but just know it's the color 310. It's a matte longwear foundation, and I absolutely love the color. I think it is definitely better than the Clinique that I have been using. Like you guys know, I'm not a huge makeup person, but uh, I do really, really like this a lot, and I have actually been able to wear it um, just on regular days. We're done with the makeup, we're done with all of that. Now we get to the luxury. So I was walking down uh, New Bond Street, It was we were staying in Mayfair, and it was just sort of walking distance. By the way, London is super hard to navigate, and I actually planned on vlogging while I was there, um, just doing like a shop with me or something like that, and it was just, it was impossible. Um, I have to use like 100% of my like faculties <laughs> to navigate my way through there while not getting hit by cars because the cars are going in the opposite direction. So unfortunately, yes, that means I cannot be walking around with a camera in my face. Uh, <laughs> I would have got, I totally would have gotten hit by a car if I did that or never ended up where I was supposed to go. But anyways, uh, so one of my first stops was Selfridges. Uh, this is the bag from Selfridges. It's like a nice yellow. And they actually have Selfridges shop online in the United States, but I've never actually used it. And I just got something small. If you follow me on Instagram, then you have seen this. If you don't follow me on Instagram, then you should, I guess, because then you'll see this stuff before I even have to do a video about it. So I got the Fendi Rappi uh, Twilly. So this is the tag that it came in, and it pretty much came off like the moment that I went to use it for the first time. So this is what it looks like. Um, I've had it, I'm using it. The reason I bought it was to tie it onto one of my bags, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so as you can see, it has this orange background with like multicolor Fendi logos, right? And this is what it looks like. Um, and it is creased here because I have had it tied on my bag. Uh, it's just super colorful and fun, and then the back side is just the normal, regular Fendi Zuka print. So this is the double side of what it looks like. I would say definitely that orange isn't normally one of my colors, but this has so many different colors on it. Uh, I think this is just awesome. Uh, my thought on this piece is something I wanted pretty much from the moment I saw. I put it onto was my Tom Ford Mini Jennifer bag just to sort of uh, pep spice it up a little bit. Um, I think these colors work together very, very nicely, and um, I actually did show a photo of this on Instagram, like I mentioned, which I hopefully will show right here, and I can carry this as a top handle bag when I have this tied on, um, which hopefully I'll show you in a split screen, and I think it's just super, super cool and adds like a little bit of like, you know, spice to 
my Tom Ford bag. Yes, so I did want this for a very, very long time, but um, I couldn't find it on the U.S. site and I couldn't find it in any of the stores here in the U.S. Now I think it is on the website, so I will link it down below. Um, I This was, of all the things that I bought, um, this one definitely is the one that I think I spent the most on in relationship to like what the, how prices are supposed to be lower in Europe. Um, I did get VAT tax refunded to me on two of the pieces and uh, I'll get into that as you know we start going through the items but this piece was 130 pounds I believe but at the time it wasn't available in the states and um, but I was refunded a $13 sorry 13 pounds in uh, that VAT, in VAT um, when I got to the airport so yeah it ended up coming out to about the same as 160 here before tax obviously um, this retails at $160 plus tax in the States, and uh, I bought it for £130 minus £13, so that came to about $160, but I didn't have to pay tax. <laughs> this one wasn't really like, you know, uh, savings of any kind, it's just cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, the next piece came from Guess Where is a pair of sunglasses that I bought from the Gucci boutique on New Bond Street. So these were a pair of sunglasses that I've wanted for so, so long. I've told you guys I don't like to spend real money on sunglasses, but I figure if you want something for six or eight months, then it's okay to buy it. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so it comes with this beautiful purple velvet case and uh, Gucci is doing a lot with velvet right now. Um, I honestly would have preferred if the case had some sort of like insignia on it. I think that would have been cool to like have Gucci sewn into it or the G's sewn into it or something to just kind of like signify like, hey, this is a Gucci case. But I bought these here and they are the Gucci Octagon. The case here is lined with this chartreuse satin. It does say Gucci on the inside. I got these, I got these in tortoise brown. Uh, so this is what they look like here. They're large and oversized. Um, they have a little small uh, Gucci little thingy on the arms here and then the V right there. So these have been available in the States for a really long time, but I've only ever seen them available in black or in glitter. And I tried on the black. There were like probably about four or five times where I almost bought the black, but I'm so glad that I waited out and got these instead. So these have, they're brown, they have tortoise shell on the, on the uh, interior with sort of a purplish gradient lens and um, are lined with gold on the outside. They're sort of square, sort of octagons, and this is what they look like on, and I absolutely am obsessed with these. I think that they are incredible. They're really lightweight on my face, and I just think they're very glamorous looking. I, I'm pretty sure that I am done buying expensive sunglasses now that I have these, and normally when my hair is a bit more uh, cooperative, it's like a whole look, but you know, it works right now, but it's just not ideal. <laughs> in uh, the States, these retail for $400 plus tax, um, and in London, they were 250 pounds. I was also refunded um, that tax, but I can't find the paperwork on it. Oh, another thing is that, um, if you guys remember, I hate these big massive cases, and what I like about these a lot is that it fits inside of my Ray-Ban case, so that's one, th one thing definitely to know if you are going to um, purchase these and you prefer smaller smaller sunglass cases like I do. Uh, this is the larger size Ray-Ban case in the coated canvas. Um, this is what I usually use in all of my bags, and they fit inside of here just perfectly. Um, this is a semi-hard case, so it does keep them pretty safe and protected without being like this massive clunky thing, and it does still fit inside of my smaller bags. Like small, smaller, smallish, less roomy bags. That one, for example, um, maybe a couple others. 
and yeah so that's just something I'm really really glad about I was worried at first that they weren't going to fit inside of here but they do and it's perfect um, but I only have really like three pieces that I bought while I was there uh, this is the last thing the last piece that I bought and I actually bought this in Terminal 5 in Heathrow uh, that's where we were flying out of and we got to the airport early and I noticed all of the boutiques um, Chase Amy actually did a great video about Heathrow Terminal 5 and I will link that down below because it was really super informative um, so, uh, yes, inside of Heathrow in Terminal 5, they have all of the designer boutiques on, inside of it, and uh, the prices are even lower than they are um, on, in the boutiques on Bond Street or wherever outside of the airport. Uh, my last piece that I got from London was this right here. This is a Louis Vuitton wallet. So this is the uh, Jean or Jeannie, probably Jean wallet. Um, so it's monogram canvas with fuchsia here and a back slip pocket that fits my phone. Um, what's this? As well as Dunkin' Donuts coupons. <laughs> my phone fits in right here and it fits in perfectly. So if I am just going on the go and want to be you know, um, pretty compact and everything. I can just carry this in my hand. Um, normally I would opt to use a bag instead, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so as you see, it's monogram canvas with a uh, gold class button. Um, if you remember last year about, I bought the Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet. I did end up selling that because it was a lot thicker. It was, it was smaller. It was about like this size. So it was like a square pretty much but it was much thicker when it came to right here. I like that this is this is a long um, long style wallet, but it is very thin, as you can see. So once again, it is much more compact and I'm able to fit it inside of my, uh, inside of my bags. Um, so it opens here to this push clasp, and my favorite part is that it comes with these little uh, compartments. Um, so this is a card holder is removable that is super super thin I mean this is like a paper thickness I mean it's so super thin um, so compact and I have my ID and my credit cards in here um, so that's four cards in here total that can fit and if you'd like me to do a full review of this piece I have been using it every day for about a month uh, then let me know in the comments down below I think it's incredible this is what it looks like on the inside um, so it has six card slots in the back here, as well as a removable pouch with a little um, little pocket on the outside. Um, honestly, I don't find that I have much use for this piece, so I may sell it. Um, um, it unzips to this. Currently, I have some business cards and an old movie ticket stub inside of here. So that just goes to show you what I'm actually doing with it. Um, just for my lifestyle, I don't feel like it's necessary. Also, if you are looking to carry cash without folding it, um, it is exactly the size of a dollar bill, as you can see. That's the thing. It's so funny that every time I talk about my wallets, I actually have happen to have cash on me. And in my real life, I never... Am have any cash whatsoever. I would just keep it flat on the inside. Um, this is what it looks like without anything inside. Um, and your cash does fit lengthwise perfectly without folding. That's normally how I would do it, except that I never carry cash. Um, also, this zipper pouch does fit really well inside of the back pocket. And that what I normally do is I'll carry it like this, and then I'll have like my phone in here. My iPhone 6S, which is super old now, fits inside of here, as well as the card holder, and zips closed, and now I'm perfectly compact and on the go. So uh, I absolutely, absolutely love this wallet. Um, I know I said that probably the only wallet I'll ever need is my Robot Clay, and honestly, uh, it's really hard to find that piece, and I felt like I, I feel like I need to give it a little bit of a break, so I have switched into this for the past month or so, and I've loved it. If you'd like to see a full review, please leave me a comment down below, and I will put that on my list of videos to film, uh, because I'm absolutely loving this piece. And honestly, when I go, nowadays when I'm going uh, into a very small, very compact bag, uh, this is really all I need to carry on a night out, and I'm really considering seriously like getting rid of all of my wallet on chains, because 
I mean, this this really is all I need, and it's much more compact this way, and I'm able to fit a lot more things inside of my bag. So I'm thinking that you know all of my bags that have card slots on the inside are are sort of redundant at this point because of this little piece. Uh, so I mentioned that I bought this inside of Heathrow. Uh, currently in the States, this retails at approximately $575, which for a Louis Vuitton wallet nowadays is a great, great price. A lot of the other wallets that they have are, you know, getting into like the $700 or so dollar range, which is a little steep for me personally. Heathrow Terminal 5, everything uh, just doesn't include the tax at all, whereas, you know, everywhere else the price includes tax, except for the States because we do that wrong. I feel like we do it wrong. Anyways. This is my receipt here and from Heathrow and I bought this for 304 four pounds. Um, that I think converted into about $400 so I actually saved like $175 or so buying this wallet. So I'm super happy and I'm super lucky that they actually had it in stock. I didn't expect them to because every Louis Vuitton that I've gone to in the States, well at least in Miami, uh, hasn't had this wallet in stock at all. So um, I think at the moment it's called Call for Availability Only, but I'll try to find links to some down below. That's all of the uh, luxury pieces that I uh, purchased while I was in London. I had such a great time and, you know, the shopping was super fun. And once again, even though I shopped retail, I saved money. But yeah, up until now, I had never bought anything at retail price. And I guess now I have to have a caveat that says I've never bought anything at U.S. retail price plus tax. So... <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there will be links to everything that I can find down below. I think most of this is pretty current season stuff, so it should be relatively easy to find, unlike most of the time on my channel. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!